Whitcom. I am from Springfield, Missouri, and I'm a photographer. My background is in art history and I studied museum conservation. So I had studied and worked with the historic images and I was just really drawn to the look of the images because they have a intense depth of field and then they're really gritty looking too. And I just felt like even with film, you don't really get that feeling. And so I really wanted to learn the process myself. And there are a handful of people that are still doing this today. So I went after college and studied under a photographer that was using this process today. And everything from there on out was just a bunch of experiments because it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> Tintype is what it's most commonly known as. The technical term is wet collodion. It was a process that was created in the 1800s and it was primarily used from the 1860s, 1870s um, and it died out not too long after the 1870s just because um, you can't make prints from it. So nobody really wanted just a single photo at that time. Now it's really cool because we're taking it back. Um, but originally people wanted to be able to make copies of things. So um, other processes came along that were easier to make replications of things. When I take a photo, it's just a one out of one. There's no copies, no duplicates. If I want to photograph a scene again or have like another version of it, I literally have to take an additional photograph. So that comes with its challenges, but I really appreciate that component of the process because it makes it to where everybody who owns one of my pieces, they know that they're the only ones that have that specific piece, which is pretty cool. I do shoot with all historic cameras. I have two that I work with for the most part, but they're all um, turn of the century cameras, the big wooden box cameras that have the cast iron um, tripod. So it's a, it's a heavy, heavy camera, a lot larger than a cell phone, that's for sure. <laughs> The process itself, I shoot directly on metal plates. Historically, they would have been iron plates, but today I use aluminum because it's lighter and more readily available. But I put a chemical emulsion on top of a plate and then it sits in a silver bath, which that's what makes it photosensitive. And then that's essentially my film that I put directly into my camera, then the light gets exposed to the plate. And then from there on out, I process it pretty closely to how you process regular film, um, except there's no possibility of duplicates. The only kind of manipulation I can do, or that I choose to do, if I want something to look different, I have to do it in camera, meaning um, that I have to just do camera tricks to be able to get the look that I'm going after. So one of my uh, series that I have been working with for the last couple of years is called my memories series. And the whole concept behind that collection of images is that there are different objects that people have in their homes or just like they've collected over time and then they will remain constant throughout history but the people that own them come and go like memory so when i'm uh looking at the or when i'm creating the images i want the images of people to be a little bit ghosted so you know it has that ethereal feeling or that feeling that you know we're not here for forever Life is fleeting, but not in a bad way, um, in a good way to remember to live for today. And um, just to remember that um, we have like a certain amount of time here, which um, a lot of people are familiar with the concept of memento mori, and that's what it is in itself. It's, um, it's a reminder of death, but it also means remember to live. So I look at, at it in a positive sense of just to, um, you know, focus on the now and the moment.